this radio operator on a B-29 bomber based on Guam and Marianas to fly to Japan and back. What's the main thing that you're trying to get across to the children today? Well, as the people that we're talking to today are growing up, it's a good idea for them to know something of the background of what got them to where we are now. In the World War II period, with all its millions of people in uniform, global war and everything, it was a hard time. I believe that. What would you say was the hardest time for you? Oh, that would be hard to answer. That. Uh, was it actually dropping bombs? Was no. It, was it just being away from home? The, the stress of a long mission. See, our flights would run from 15 to 16 hours normally. Our longest one was uh, roughly 17 and a half hours. And to get ready for the flight, do the flight, come back, and go through the debriefing and what have you, it would take a full 24-hour period. But see, in those days, those four propeller engines, we did not have the speed that the jet bombers have today. Because it would take seven hours to go from our air base to the nearest point of Japan. Oh, wow. What would you, uh, what do you think is one of the things that the children are actually taking away from you talking to them one-on-one? -on -one? Well, it would depend how close they would be listening to the various people that are talking in Let's here. Let's say they're paying very close attention. What do you think that they're, uh, they're getting out of this today? They should be getting the fact that in times past, many people worked and suffered to bring them to where they are today. That had we not had the victory in World War II, where would we be? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed like it needed to come after that sentence right there. Um, all these gentlemen, most of them serving in World War II, like yourself. Uh, the group that has since seated in there, they covered all the way from uh, World War II up through the Vietnam era. They're mixed group. Yeah. I understand. I, that's why some of them in there are World War II, like yourself. Yeah. So I pulled you out. Because this is World War II day that we're trying to focus in on. Uh, if you could tell the viewers here, you can still look at me, if you could tell the viewers one thing about World War II that may enlighten them, that may give them knowledge, what would you say, very briefly? Well, for one thing, communication. Back in World War II, we did not have mass communication like we do now. Things would happen and uh, people at home wouldn't hear about it for a long time afterwards. Nowadays, with the news media, the uh, communications that we have, you sit down and eat your evening meal, your TV set brings the war right up with you. So that uh, it's an entirely different approach to the whole thing. You hear about it as it happens. What's the, uh, what do you think, how is this emotionally for you, talking about this today to these young kids? It doesn't bother. Now some people it does, but uh, it doesn't bother. Now your experience as a radio, final question, your experience as a radio operator, uh, was that the field that you wanted to go into when you were, were you drafted, Not, did you enlist? Well, uh, I was drafted at age 18. And no, I wasn't particularly interested in being a radio operator. That, like one of the other gentlemen said, that happened to have a slot when you're available. This is what you are. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you're told, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, thank you very much.